Our next speaker is going to bring to to our attention what sustainability means to the beef industry and I wanted to kind of get a thumb sketch in my mind what sustainability is and I looked it up this morning on the internet and as short a definition as it is is the ability to continue a defined behavior indefinitely and I think if we take that in co into context with social aspects environment and economic I, I think our next speaker Mr. Bob Langert is going to address this topic uh, Bob is a native of Illinois and has been gainfully employed with McDonald's Corporation for several years in various capacities. And so, Bob, I'd like to invite you to the podium to share with us your, your thoughts on sustainability and what it means to the beef industry. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be here. Great to be invited to talk about uh, sustainability. I come here in a, uh, a new role. I, I'm still adjusting to my fifth day of being retired from McDonald's, some, something that I did for 32 years. And uh, I've been working on the uh, sustainability scene for 25 years. So uh, my colleagues at work said I'm cage-free. Uh, so maybe I'm more, even more free to talk more freely, but uh, obviously my opinions now are my own, uh, not being an employee of McDonald's, but my heart and soul is still with McDonald's, and I was a, uh, a chief architect uh, of our sustainable beef uh, efforts, so glad to talk about that in some detail, and uh, I really want to save the last 15 minutes, so watch the clock, I want to save the last 15 minutes for questions. Really, really important that we have an open dialogue about what this all means, because at the end of the day, I believe, and uh, we at McDonald's uh, believe that sustainability is, is part of growing our business and growing your business. I, I think we need to kind of think of the mindset. I think many people in food and agriculture look at sustainability a little bit as trying to stay out of trouble, that the agenda is being created by the uh, activists. Uh, when in reality, I think companies like McDonald's are, are seeing this as, a, as an opportunity. That's how, you know, that's how we see it. So I want to, before I get into beef, though, I think it's really important to talk about the big picture of uh, what sustainability means for businesses. Why are they doing what they're doing? Not just McDonald's, but so many other large corporations are making sustainability a really a big part of, of how they're defining themselves. And what does it mean for food in general? Because you can't talk about sustainability for beef without this big picture, but we'll, we'll dive into it for sure. I am very glad that Dale offered his definition of uh, sustainability. Uh, certainly, you know, what does it mean is a really good question. The language of sustainability is, is really, really odd, but, uh, but really it does mean social, environmental, and economic. And I'm glad the first presenters talked about the third pillar of the economic viability of not only McDonald's business, but your business and the whole beef industry. Uh, we cannot shortchange the economic viability, but I need to talk about social and environmental aspects as well. And, you know, and for those that think this perhaps is a, a trend or a fad, you know, I just wouldn't bet the bank on that. Uh, that's not how we see it at McDonald's. Uh, we see it as part of the future. We see it being driven by the consumer. This is not being driven by the activists. Uh, this is being driven by people that are viewing their food, where it comes from, what's in it, and how it's processed as the biggest trend over the last seven years that we've ever seen. And you're seeing companies like us respond to this opportunity, and uh, you're gonna see more of it in the future. When I was born, my birthday was just last week, and the dean mentioned how we need to feed more people with less. Uh, it is so true. Uh, the fact is, when I was born, there were 1.7 billion people in the world. Can you imagine that there's 7.2 billion today? I mean, just in my lifetime, just think about that just for a second, 5.5 billion people more, with a couple more billion to come over the next couple decades. So sustainability is 
it's not a choice, actually. Uh, it's here. And we have to do more with less. And we have to figure out a way to look at the social, environmental, and economic aspects of this in a way that is good uh, for all of our businesses. And don't let others defend, you know, what, what cattle is. And, and certainly if we would have talked about sustainability in beef 10, 15 years ago, we wouldn't have been defining the cow this way. But things are changing. Uh, yes, there are activists out there. Michael Pollan, I just saw this video. If you want to get a video that kind of, kind of makes you want to throw up, uh, look at this video from Michael Pollan, New York Times, and he talks about using the quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's. He talks about how 26 ounces, he's not pouring Coca-Cola there, he's pouring oil. And he says it takes 26 ounces of oil to make a quarter pounder with cheese. Now, it, it kind of makes you wonder with rhetoric like that, you know, and claims like that, uh, kind of demonizing what beef is. The, uh, certainly the consumer's view of things are, are skewed and being influenced from kind of the old-fashioned way of looking at it through different terms and different uh, ways of looking at things. And, and certainly activists and groups like PETA, the Humane Society, Right now, I'd say, unfortunately, they're defining the agenda. And I don't like that. We didn't like it at McDonald's. You know, who is it up for them to define what sustainable beef means for all of us? Uh, the whole pink slime incident, et cetera. So we can't let the activist agenda define who we are. And so that's why I really think all of us in the whole food industry, the egg industry, the beef industry from farm to fork need to be uh, tied together, working together to turn around from just playing defense. And I really do believe that's the tipping point where we're at today. We're transitioning from playing defense, reacting to all these things, letting other people define who we are, what you do, what is good in their eyes. And by the way, their perspective and these activists, it's too narrow too short-sighted, too emotional, and it's not based on science. They should not be the winners in this uh, dialogue. So a new way of looking at this is that it is about good things. It is about opportunity. It is about growing our businesses. We believe, and the reason that we at McDonald's wanted to have sustainable beef was absolutely not a defensive measure at all. Nothing to do with any activist agenda. It was all about, we want beef to be more relevant to our consumers. McDonald's serves 70 million customers a day. Beef is the definition of who McDonald's is. We started out with the 15 cent hamburger in 1955. I did my economic analysis. That 15 cent hamburger is worth $1.30 today. Now you know why we kind of struggle with that dollar menu. <laughs> But hey, that's part of our business model. Quality, service, cleanliness, and value. That's what made us in 1955. Uh, but that business model is being challenged today. If you read the news, we're struggling a little bit. Sales are not the same. We've lost some of the magic. We've lost some of the momentum of our business. And part of our turnaround uh, agenda is all about our food making it more relevant and modern. And how we source our food, where it comes from and what's in it, is part of how we're redefining ourselves today and tomorrow. Really, it's a whole different way of looking at sustainability. I think looking at it from this shared value perspective is the new way of defining sustainability. Uh, I've led the work at McDonald's for 25 years on corporate responsibility. Most of that time was based on the, the right side of that curve, trying to do the right thing for society. Uh, that's where our ethics came from, from McDonald's. We were always dedicated to doing the right thing, giving back to the community. It, it didn't have a, uh, a business you know, motivation. But really now, with uh, the release of our new efforts, which I'll describe in a little bit, 
uh, we've made it a business imperative. We see not only having value for society, but the things that we do for sustainability are meant to grow our business. It's the mixture of two. So let me give you some examples. We now offer side salads as part of uh, our, our, our value meals. You can substitute a value, uh, side salad for a French fry. Hey, we love our French fries, but we're offering si side salads because we want you to come to McDonald's maybe one more time a month. And you know, so we see this extra option as a way to increase frequency and visits. Uh, we added some uh, oranges to our Happy Meals for Kids. Uh, we're not doing that just because we want to offer more fruits and vegetables for children, but certainly, I mean, that's certainly part of it. But we're offering it because we want to increase our Happy Meal sales with families, and be more relevant for moms and their children, and so on. The same with beef. You know, we didn't create sustainable beef uh, out of a whim. Uh, we said to ourselves, beef is part of who we are. It's our brand. Uh, McDonald's right now, we have five brands that sell beef for over a billion dollars a year. Uh, we want to sell more beef into the future. Right now, the average uh, American, for example, does not believe we serve 100% beef, even though we do. The majority of the people think we put other stuff in there. We don't have the quality image that we need to have for our beef and our food, and we're out to uh, go after it big time to, to churn around our business. I want to just give you a, a little bit of a, a survey, you know, not only at McDonald's, what's going on, but uh, people in the food and restaurant industry. I mean, again, this is not a trend. You're seeing the tipping point of so many things happening at once. Of course, McDonald's, we made our announcement to start buying sustainable beef uh, about 14 months ago is when we put out that announcement. So. We're, uh, we're about a year away from making our actual first purchases of uh, verifiable, sustainable beef. More about that later. I just saw the news this week. I'm sure you read about McDonald's announcements to, to go without antibiotics in the chicken supply chain. A uh, long time in the making. And I think it's very interesting to uh, take this uh, quote that I saw in the news from a, a good friend of mine the head of supply chain in the U.S., Marion Gross, and notice what she says there. And I put in red how the customers, how we're listening to the customers and how the customers are responding. And uh, I want you to know that our sustainability agenda at McDonald's is being driven by the consumer. Really important thing to remember uh, that that's who's defining this agenda. And that's who we're trying to, to please. Walmart just made a big announcement, I believe this was a week or 10 days ago. Now they're making a, a list available through their sustainability uh, index that they, they, they kind of track and measure how their suppliers are, are doing. You're probably aware of that. But now they're posting this on their website and they're making it available to uh, all their customers and they're naming names and they're putting the, the winners out there as to who has sustainable products. And I checked it a couple days ago. I didn't see uh, anything in the, the meat area yet. But it's coming. It's coming. You know, you can bank on the fact that months or maybe a year down the road, Walmart's going to have what sustainable beef is for their customers, just like McDonald's is approaching it. You know, Chipotle has had their uh, Food with Integrity program for over 10 years. And you may uh, debate their uh, simple depiction of how they look at agriculture, because I certainly debate it. But the fact is, they're enormously successful. Uh, the, uh, their sustainability uh, efforts are central to what they do. And it's amazing, about a month ago, they, they ran out of sustainable pork in their restaurants, and so they had to put a note out in their, in their restaurants that we couldn't serve sustainable pork anymore. And they got kudos and credit for so many people because they're, just, they're trying to do that. And Wall Street right now is in love with Chipotle, and they're growing significantly. And it's interesting, when I read the articles about Chipotle and healthy food, uh, and Chipotle is defined as healthy food, but you know the average calories per, per burrito is, what is it about? You're nodding your head. How many calories are in that burrito, you think? 
you're pretty darn close. A lot of them are 1,200, at least 1,000. And, and by the way, I, I, have a, I have a McDonald's Be Our Guest card for our value meal for who can tell me how many calories are in a Big Mac? 780? Oh, who said 520? All right, come and get a coupon afterwards. 500, <laughs> I got one right here in my pocket. 550 calories, add in a, a small fry and a, a drink, I think you're still gonna beat Chipotle. So, you know, what my point is, health and sustainability, they're getting intermixed, aren't they? And the definition of what is healthy it's interesting, it's getting intermixed. Panera Bread, I, I see their commercials about live consciously. Chick-fil-A just made this announcement to go antibiotic free a couple months ago. Hellman's mayonnaise is a uh, Unilever's uh, product and they're going uh, cage free with their uh, eggs that make up this product. Unilever is a is probably the leading company. If you want to look at who's leading on sustainability, look at Unilever, and they're a big, big food company. They're making sustainability central to what they do. Check it out. They have 330 brands within the Unilever umbrella. Each of their brands, through their CEO directive, has to have a purpose for why they exist. See how things are changing? This idea that customers are looking for more than just good tasty food at a good price and having it be convenient. They want to have some sort of larger purpose being satisfied. Sodexo, just, uh, Sodexo is probably one of the biggest food service providers in all the world, just announced going cage-free with all their egg purchases, uh, I think last week. I mean, look at all the stuff that's happening. Now to me, and your dean just mentioned the dietary guidelines, the uh, technical reports just came out about a week ago. It, it all hit the news within the last week. There is a whole effort on sustainability now within the dietary guidelines. Your dean didn't make mention of that. He talked about how the breakfasts are gonna be there. But now sustainability is actually on the plate for being defined for a sustainable diet. Now the critics are saying, holy moly, why, why would nutritionists be bringing in sustainability? Shouldn't nutritionists stick to calories and fat and sugars and sodium, but no, people's eating habits are changing. It's not just the calories anymore, it's where the food comes from, it's how it's sourced. I mean, look at it. To me, people are gonna look back at this year with these dietary guidelines, with sustainability being built in as a very big milestone towards sustainability being mainstream. Now, being involved in the beef industry I think you should look at this thing closely. Uh, they are advocating you know, more, more balanced diet. There is some talk about eating less beef. Uh, you could take a look at this and say, hey, this is not good for the industry. I would not look at it that way. I would look at it, how can we make beef more attractive? They're saying you can have beef and have be beef in, in certain schemes and moderation, et cetera. So again, recognize that food is being defined very holistically now. So this is the headline. Uh, this is the headline for the work that we're doing at McDonald's. I believe it's the headline for people that are inv involved with food service. People want to feel good about the food they're eating. And how do they find, how do they define feeling good? They want to enjoy, you know, the taste and the experience and the fun, but they wanna know where that food comes from, how it's sourced, what's in it, and how it's processed. That's becoming more of a mainstream idea. These, these values that these consumers have are changing. They're exp they want to do more business with companies that share their values. I wanna talk a little bit more about uh, purpose and how companies are, are looking beyond just presenting themselves commercially. They're presenting themselves for various reasons to have a purpose-driven business. Customers are not looking to engage with companies that are just looking to make money anymore. They have to have a, a scope and mission beyond that. Yeah, there's a lot of external pressures. Uh, trust 
is at an all-time low. If I were to show you the trust scores for McDonald's, you would, you would just almost like wonder how we're able to survive in business. Our trust scores are, are low. Uh, scientists and NGO scores are high. So we have uh, to work with this landscape of distrust in the environment, especially for bigger companies. More and more companies are looking at growing and becoming bigger through a sense of purpose. I gave you the example of uh, Unilever. Uh, heck, even Walmart with their Living Better tagline. And you're going to see more of a trend uh, towards doing this. You know, the fact is uh, McDonald's is, is going more out front to show that we're a company that is engaged with areas that people care about. And we haven't spent that much time doing it in the past. We've used our marketing money to promote products. And now you've, you've probably seen our commercials. We're starting to spend a lot more money defining who we are as a brand, what we stand for. I'm loving it now is giving back to the community, uh, paying back people through loving works of kindness, the, the road sign commercial. You're seeing us at McDonald's uh, put out there who we really feel we are. I didn't work at McDonald's for 32 years. Uh, just, just for a job, I believe it's a great company with great people, with great ethics, and we need to have more people see that in our company. So the reality is that companies are going after the sense of purpose to sell more. Uh, so sell more, uh, we're using this term aspirational, so you can check Globescan. Globescan does a lot of research. This is who I borrowed this from. Aspirationals are a big, significant part of the population. And let me define it for you. They're not just millennials. They're, they're people that are very engaged with being materialistic. They like to spend money, but they want to spend money through products and services that they can connect with, that have a larger purpose. And roughly speaking, there's, there's uh, aspirationals everywhere in the world, you know, to the tune of 30, 40% of the population. At McDonald's, I can tell you this, our research showed that about 20% of our customers thought we did a very good job on being responsible. 30% thought we were not good. That's not a good number. But 50% were in this in-between zone. And it's that 50% that want to spend money, that want to engage with companies like us that we're trying to sell more to. Well, let me dig deeper uh, a little bit now to uh, the McDonald's effort and where B fits into our, our new sustainability framework. We just announced a big plan with goals and targets that define who we are at McDonald's. You can't read all this, uh, I'm sure, but this is our roadmap for the future. This is our sustainability vision for 2020. It has five pillars of food sourcing, people, community, and the planet. It has eight goals. It says we're going to double fruits and vegetables to consumers. We're going to reduce energy by 20%. We're going to increase recycling by 50%. Probably the area that you're most interested in is under the sourcing pillar. We say that we're going to, our vision is we're going to source all of our food and packaging from verifiable, sustainable sources. That is a humongous statement that McDonald's is saying. And remember, we're mainstream. We have 35,000 restaurants around the world in 119 countries. We employ 1.8 million people, serving 70 million people. So when McDonald's makes this statement, this is not some little mom, pa place. This is mainstream business, saying this is the way of the future. Our specific goals for 2020 is to uh, buy 100% sustainable coffee, fish, uh, all of our packaging coming from uh, sustainable fiber, and 100% palm oil. And I mentioned our goal to start purchasing sustainable beef by 2016. I think it's really important that you take a look at how we at McDonald's define our vision of what a sustainable supply chain is. And as you read through this, I want you to kind of look at how uh, holistic the definition is because it is holistic. It is providing quality, safety, affordability, you know, uh, 
but it's also talking about these three E's. So really, these three E's of ethics, the environment, and economics, they drive our decision making uh, within the McDonald's supply chain. And this last phrase of doing things that would benefit the world at large is also a big statement for us, because we realize now that we are a leader, and a leader needs to lead with bolder statements to help to move markets and, and transform. And we know we can't do it alone, uh, but that's what we're out to do. So as evidence of that, uh, we now, we probably at McDonald's, we probably serve the most sustainable products to people in the uh, restaurant business. So I'm not sure if you knew, but all of our fish is verifiable uh, Marine Stewardship Council fish sandwiches. So for you that are celebrating Lent, uh, today's Friday. I have some uh, value meals. You can go buy some fish uh, later on. <laughs> Most people don't realize we're selling sustainable fish. We're also selling sustainable coffee. All of our espresso-based coffee is Rainforest Alliance certified. Again, yeah, this is big stuff, the tip of the iceberg, you know, with more to come in the future. And I, I put this uh, bus sign up here because in Chicago, where I live, uh, all over Chicago now, we have billboards and signs talking about sustainable fish at a sustainable price. And to me, this is very symbolic of the future that now we're reaching the consumer. I've always said the sustainability movement is not sustainable until the consumer is involved. And now you see us getting the consumer involved. So let's, let's dive deep into this uh, time here now before the Q&A to kind of dig deep into uh, this question. So, you know, uh, when we announced getting sustainable beef, uh, particularly the Australians were pretty skeptical of some of the things we're doing. I, I remember reading a rancher saying, hey, there's nobody here in Australia that's demanding a sustainable Big Mac. So when I read that article, I, I said to myself, that person is exactly right. The answer to that question is both no, but it's also the answer is yes. So let me explain. My, my best way of explaining it would be, do you think people were asking 15 years ago for uh, some sort of little device that they could connect with the world and get anything at any time, anytime they want. I, I don't know that they were like asking for that 15 years ago. Uh, but boy, did that product serve a need. Uh, we can't live without it. I, I've gone on trips into the depths of the Amazon where people live on a dollar a day, but they have their cell phone. It's just, it's just amazing. <laughs> Uh, I always consider it to be a luxury. Uh, so I think people are looking for a sustainable Big Mac without asking for it. It goes back to people want their food to feel good about it. And it's, it's for companies like us to make them feel good about the beef they serve. So, you know, we have a shared commitment on this because uh, we at McDonald's can not do this alone. Uh, we buy beef from you, and thanks to you, you know, we have a, a wonderful business, and we value the whole supply chain very much. Uh, but the fact is, uh, yeah, we only buy a certain percentage of beef. Does anybody here want to get a coupon to buy a meal at McDonald's and tell me how much beef do we buy in the marketplace? What percentage of the beef globally and in the United States? You can come within 5%, you get a coupon. Nope. Down. Who said five? Collect your coupon. We buy uh, less than 2%. And uh, I'll speak to audiences with the McDonald's. I, I had all the lawyers in the room a few weeks ago, and I asked, they were telling me we buy 50%, 75% of the beef. No, hey, 2%, hey, 2% is big. Uh, you know, I think Walmart buys approximately about the, the same thing. So I'm not trying to say we're too small, but the fact is, this is a collaborative effort. Uh, we, we can't, we don't raise animals, nor do we know anything about it. 
you know, we think we're good at running restaurants and pleasing consumers, and we need to work in collaboration with the, the experts to, to, to define what this is and make it happen. Hence, why we very much were a catalyst behind the Global Roundtable for Sustainable Beef. So to me, this is a, a major deal. We put a lot of our, our chips into our strategy with the idea of forming a round table with up to now, I believe there's 60, 70, 80 members of this round table from all parts of the supply chain, all the way from uh, the ranchers and producers, you know, to retailers and NGOs. So we believe that a multi-stakeholder group uh, is the best way to define what sustainability means. So this group was formed uh, a few years ago and has, has accomplished uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit. And you can see the, uh, the scope and mission of the Global Roundtable for Sustainable Beef was to define a way to uh, uh, get, get acceptance all the way through of what this meant, lead by science, define it by continuous improvement, uh, have this be offense and not defense to the critics. We've talked uh, about how to define sustainability, and here's a couple ways the Global Roundtable is defining it. Uh, I think the way they're defining it is uh, spot on. I think it's brilliant. And I think, I think it's gonna make all of our work you know, very relevant to consumers. Because consumers care about the impact on the uh, planet, people, and don't forget you know, the animal, the animal welfare aspects of anything and our research shows that animal welfare is probably more important than the environment just in terms of how consumers you know think and this idea of progress a lot of that means economic progress for for you and for all of us is part of it and certainly this idea of the the triple bottom line so uh if your dean was here and you can pass this he's not here anymore is he so i can take him on right now i can debate him you know, so, uh, you know, he, he defines sustainable, sustainable beef, especially for beef, as less inputs producing more. You know, absolutely, you know, I, I thought he gave some great headlines for the things that I'm talking about as well. But, by the way, that, that's a one-dimensional approach. So I would just say that it's, it's not one-dimensional. It's not only about less inputs and producing more. It's doing so with the social aspects in mind, social being the, 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 community, the community, animal treatment issues, which are complex, they're very complex. Because where do you draw the line uh, for, we need, we need intensification in animal industry, the critics call it factory farming, but we need, we need sustainable intensification. And you know, this economic viability is really, really important. So many people, uh, you know, I've been out, out talking to many people in the beef industry over the last year and a half, and many people in the beef industry say, well, we are sustainable. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm proud of our, our land. We, we pass our business on for generations to, you know, past generations to come. And the issue is we no longer, though, can say, we just can't use rhetoric anymore. We just can't say we're sustainable. We have to actually measure it and prove it and have more credibility towards it. So I mentioned that uh, there are many stakeholders involved with the uh, Global Roundtable for Sustainable Beef. You can see some big names, uh, you know, Walmart, uh, McDonald's, uh, suppliers like JBS, Cargill. You'll see uh, some NGO partners like the World Wildlife Fund. Uh, a really good array and, and more are joining every day. Uh, I really commend this group for the work it's done over the uh, last couple years. They've been learning through all types of initiatives going on in the world. So uh, just to kind of get out of your American viewpoint, you know, the, the fact is that the sustainable beef area is, is really accelerating around the world. So I think you know, if, the, if the US beef industry is gonna be a leader, which I'm convinced you will and we will, uh, the fact is uh, Ireland thinks they're gonna have the best sustainable beef program in the world. You know, Brazil has got efforts going on to define sustainable beef. Uh, Canada uh, and McDonald's, uh, we, we think that maybe our first purchases for sustainable beef will be uh, north of the border in Canada. 
the Australians are pursuing some things as well. So this is a global phenomenon and a global effort. And uh, you know, I, I think to win in the marketplace is going to take uh, mastery of many elements, including the sustainability agenda. The Global Roundtable uh, obviously has worked setting up five global principles and 42 criteria that define that. And the, the criteria and principles all have to do with uh, people, community, social, environment, animal welfare, and economics. Uh, you can look it up online. It's not meant to be prescriptive. It's not meant to be uh, uh, throw it down your throat, here's what you have to do type of approach. Uh, it's very much a uh, global framework that we know has to be adapted to local conditions. So this is not a mandate from high. Uh, this is a collaborative effort where now we are looking for ways to come up with uh, ways to have indicators at a local level. So for example, also within the last week, the announcement of a, uh, a Beef U.S. roundtable was announced. And uh, some of the same names were part of that roundtable, McDonald's, Walmart, uh, and others, along with the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association. I saw Kansas State University on that collaborative effort as well. So thank you, K-State, for joining the U.S. collaborative effort. So this is an effort that will help define what this means for U.S. beef. Very happy to see that. So the work of the roundtable uh, has just come to a, a milestone finish with the uh, publication of the definitions. And now it's going out to the, the regions to figure out how to implement. And uh, we at McDonald's are on a uh, fairly fast track to start purchasing sustainable beef. We haven't committed to any particular percentage volume in 2016, except that we're going to start doing it in 2016 and we're gonna set goals for 2020 during that year. So more to come from McDonald's. Well, I just wanna finish off with uh, a few uh, principles that are, are driving our work. Uh, we, we very much believe in working to, together. Uh, we are a very collaborative company. Anybody that, that knows McDonald's works in our supply chain uh, we believe in partnership, uh, we believe in trust, we believe in sharing information. Uh, McDonald's supply chain started by handshake agreements with our suppliers and that pretty much still defines how we work with our suppliers. We do not price shop day to day. We believe in long-term uh, relationships with our suppliers. We recognize the work that everybody in food and ag does the way that it gets defined in the popular press probably bothers you as much as it bothers me. Uh, we have the wrong people defining what sustainability is. And we need to get more of us out there defining what sustainability means, means for our business. And, you know, we need to use common sense. So part of the uh, approach is to uh, Rather than argue at the margins and get a perfect system, we're looking to get something that perhaps is 70, 80 percent there. Uh, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect. Hey, if you follow politics, it seems like politicians can never agree upon anything. We have all these extremes that don't want to uh, come to an agreement. Uh, I think there's enough in common here that we can drive this and start something to define this. you're gonna see uh, the need for more and more open communication. I mean, the, the fact is, uh, transparency is needed. Uh, I think we come from an area, even at McDonald's, you know, this whole area of you know, openness in the digital world and social media, it can be scary. But I would say, rather than have it be scary, the fact is, this, we're only at the tip of the iceberg for how open and transparent the world is gonna be. So at McDonald's, we chose rather than to ignore it, we said, hey, we're going to jump in. And I encourage you to go online and look at Are Food Your Questions? 
fascinating stuff. Uh, and we're answering people's questions about where their food comes from. And we're showing videos of where our eggs and french fries and beef and McNuggets, where they come from, how they're made. We believe the more that we could show the work of farmers and ranchers and producers and people all along the, the chain, the more transparency, the better. I have been uh, to so many different uh, facilities uh, that raise animals and crops within our supply chain. And in general, the area that what we're looking at here is not trying to fix a problem. We're trying to accentuate, accentuate something that is a strong agricultural system and perhaps put measurement to it uh, that people can understand and make it more transparent to the consumer. So that ends my uh, talk, and I'd like to open it up for questions and see what uh, I stirred in your mind about what this uh, means for what you're doing. I can answer questions about McDonald's and all the other efforts that we have. Yes, sir. The, uh, the global group uh, accepts members that are interested in uh, solutions that are science-based. So uh, that would eliminate PETA. <laughs> PETA? I have, to, I have to check. Uh, I, I can't answer about USDA. I mean, they're obviously USDA is a, a rational scientific body. I'm not sure if they're involved or not. You know, the, uh, if you look back to the NGOs that are involved with the Global Roundtable, uh, they're good groups, good groups that are really looking at science. You know, many of these NGOs, like the World Wildlife Fund, I, I think they're really, really good. And they're, you know, we need a third party to. Uh, Customers are not going to believe McDonald's. Maybe they don't believe you, but we need to work with third parties like the World Wildlife Fund, like the Nature Conservancy, and groups that are based on uh, science as they are. Uh, you know, most of these NGOs are, are well intended, and uh, the ones that have a different agenda, you know, to me, they should be, uh, they should be, uh, they should be the fringe. Uh, unfortunately, right now, I believe the squeaky wheel is getting the getting too much attention, and we need to change that the sooner the better. Why would you uh, break the Navy and force the Saints to opt for violence to do the same if they've got the same basic business model? Uh -huh. that I did, not, I did not say that. So I said that they would be the, the first that we might buy from. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're more sustainable, but they might be the one that is first able to have a, a system that provides a credible metric and standard backed by a third party that can kind of prove it. So that's the key, you know. So. You're not sustainable in today's world until you can actually uh, prove it. Yes. Oh, you're talking about the uh, aspirational.
Well, I don't, I don't have a good answer for you. You know, I could uh, try to follow up with I, I would say my intuition is that the European countries are really, really tough critics. I mean, they're, as you know, Europe has sustainability built into how they think for a long time. They, they think they own sustainability in Europe. Uh, and, and so I, I think they're much more critical, and that's, why, uh, that's how I would view their scores, why Europe is lower. And I, I think the subject is very, very new to uh, parts of uh, Asia. And I, so I think both new and the opportunity being new, plus there's a lot of uh, empowerment with a new middle class opening up in Asia that's going to have more money to spend. And I, these, these values-based decisions are going to be part of how they think. Yes, sir. I, I, I love your question. I think it's the, the it's like a key question of our times. Uh, I'm with you. I, I don't understand. First of all, I don't understand why there's so many critics of uh, technology being used for food that can enhance people's lives. Uh, I just don't understand it. You know, technology is is really super sexy. You know, with other products. I mean, all products like hey, technology is wonderful. But when it comes to food, people don't want it. And it's wrong. Uh, and, and recent examples really bother me. It, I tell you what, I, I've lost sleep over this subject. Because uh, if you have a scale of popular opinion in science, yeah, I do worry that just the, the simplicity of popular opinion is outweighing science. So take, uh, take one of our suppliers that developed a genetically modified potato. And you know, we've kind of publicly said that uh, we're going to take a pass on it right now. Now, why are we taking a pass on it? You know, by the way, if you were to take a look at the science of that GMO potato, that potato is better for the world. So you'd think that we should be doing it. On the other hand, you take a look at consumer research. If we did it, the consumers would be uh, not happy. And we'd be selling less French fries. I mean, it's a dilemma. Uh, and then whose role is it to, to clarify it? And by the way, that GMO potato, it's not like they're taking the DNA from some, you know, butterfly and putting it into the and putting it into the potato they're simply taking the dna from another potato and putting it into a different potato so you know there, there should be some range there and i was just reading about the uh, the apple and again there's a gmo apple now that's out for sale and it's the same thing it's uh, it's just taking the dna from one apple and splicing it into a different one i mean there's different levels of genetic engineering uh, but I believe that uh, technology has to be a part of the solution, whether it's genetic modification of some sort or other means. Uh, if we're going to make the world better, if these technologies can make people healthier, food, have better nutrition, uh, have less inputs, it has to be part of the solution. And right now, it's not viewed that way. Way in the back. Uh, the answer is to be determined. So uh, <laughs> that's what we're working on uh, this year. Uh, th in Canada, they have a round table for sustainable beef in Canada. They're addressing that question. So it will end up being some set of metrics that you measure, and that the idea is it would be validated by a third party. And the, the intent is not to add bureaucracy and cost, because, you know, a lot of questions we, we get is, oh, you must be adding on a, a, a layer of complexity and paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. No, no, we're, we're, we're not trying to do that. I mean, by the way, in a term we're using, and remember, important term, we're looking for verifiable. You know, we didn't say certified. 
So we're looking for, and verifiable means there's different ways you could do that. They kind of make sense. So to be determined, uh, the work of the U.S. Roundtable just started. Uh, we look for them to create that solution. Way in the back there, I saw your hand up. I, I can answer that question uh, with our motivations in mind. And our motivations would be to define it by continuous improvement. So that would that'd be my answer to it, is, is ways that show continuous improvement towards better outcomes for people, the planet, and economic viability. Uh, and not having any bias at all towards how that's done. Hey, we, we have plenty of grass-fed beef in the uh, McDonald's system worldwide, and we have grain-fed beef. So we're not declaring anything is better system than another, but whatever system it is, we would like to have uh, metrics and show continuous improvement towards the holistic measures. And, uh, and to me, that's a pretty good definition of sustainability, is just doing better tomorrow than you are today related to people, planet, and profit. Yes? I would think the answer to your question would be uh, close to uh, maybe one person out of 100. So yeah, we have a long way to go. Uh, I'm not sure that we'll use the word sustainability because it is so confusing. Uh, I think we need to figure it out. We don't have the answer. So I think we'll, we'll have technical answers as to what defines sustainability. I think reaching the consumer we're going to need to tap into a lot of the, the marketing experts, and this is our, this is our first attempt. But I, I would say that it's going to emanate beyond sustainability. It would emanate towards companies caring about their uh, community, showing a, a sense of purpose, and, and showing that we're engaged in making their lives better. It would be more of a macro way, but to be determined. Yes, sir. Exactly. I'm not going to go try to say whether Donald's is sustainable and how they took the neighborhood. Exactly. I do not know that. The other thing is uh, a little similar to the question up here. If we have to have a system of verification of sustainability that adds significantly to the cost of production, isn't that in itself unsustainable? We're, we're spending resources on things that's not, not producing a product for the consumer. And then the other thing, the other item that bothers me a little bit is how McDonald's and some others say by the year 2016 we're going to buy so much sustainable beef. Isn't that indicating to our consuming public that beef is not produced sustainably now? I think that is totally inaccurate. Well, you know, so, you know, we, uh, I don't look at it the same way. So we, we look at it as trying to bring forth the, the good aspects of sustainable beef. And the, the reality is, the economic part of your, your question is, 
it's sort of like, uh, I compare it to kind of cleaning, the clean bathrooms. Hopefully when you go to McDonald's, we have real clean bathrooms. Uh, I compare it to sustainable beef because it's, it's a cost of doing business. They have clean bathrooms. Uh, I would view sustainability as being very similar to how quality and safety are. They're becoming a part of doing business. Uh, the landscape is changing. It's, it's just going to be part of doing business. And of course, if there's a cost to it, that's, that's a cost that we're, that's going to have to be in the equation for the whole value chain, including McDonald's and, and the customer. And uh, you're right about the first part. You know, we can't let others define what this is. And the more that any of us sit back and not act upon this, and I would just encourage uh, the people in this room and the leaders in this room to take that U.S. collaborative effort that was just announced this week and do something with it. Uh, that is your leadership group that's going to make this happen. And your voice is really, really important. Uh, let's make this not a negative situation. I, I, my whole talk is based on sustainability as an opportunity. I believe it's an opportunity for you. Uh, and it's not, it's less of a risk. And I, I like to change the mindset that sustainability is, wow, we can help grow the attractiveness of beef to more and more consumers and public so that we can sell more hamburgers at our place and more beef at other restaurants as well. How many more questions, boss? One more. Question. One more. Who, pick one. would ask about, well, what does sustainable fish mean? Does that mean that one person out of 100 out there is driving this whole thing? The other 99 don't really care? They just want it cheap? No. I go back to my uh, iPhone uh, example. I, I think people, they want their food that comes from highly ethical source processes, have really good ingredients, it's, it's been raised and produced by responsible ranchers. It's used uh, less inputs, respected the environment, and respected the animal. Our research shows if you were to ask 100 customers, is that what they want? They would say yes. So if you ask them, do they want sustainable beef, they wouldn't know what it is. But if you ask them that list I just gave you, they all would want that. 99 out of 100 would say that. And, and give it to me at a good price, too, they'd say. <laughs> and successfully, but it didn't necessarily have positive reviews from the customer. But now switching to sustainability, uh, you almost paint a picture of that to the consumer as almost uh, beef that's produced, you know, traditionally with the classical farmer with the pitchfork and it's all grass-fed natural. So you're kind of almost moving away from really telling that consumer that we want to utilize technology to make our production more efficient. Yeah, I think you, 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 you very uh, accurately described the current uh, predicament, I think, that we're all in. And uh, I, I am not prescribing. I'm, I'm saying technology needs to be part of the, the sustainable future and that we all need to, to be uh, working together to define modern agriculture needs to be defined so that more intensive processes and that are highly productive and produce more activity is perceived as a good thing. And right now, it's not perceived as a good thing. You know, the, the reality is it's modern agriculture is, is somewhat demonized. It's called factory farming. It's not valid. It's not true. Uh, so how are we going to work together to redefine this to the consumer? You saw what we're doing with our food, your questions. So we're putting our hat in the game. Uh, I'm not sure we're the best company to talk about GMOs, and I don't think we are. Well, you're going to see McDonald's do more and more to be transparent about where our food comes from, and we're going to be part of the positive solution to sell your story and sell the stories about where our food comes from. 